Hi everyone, today we're going to be going through the anterior and posterior Chapman points that are sure to be tested on your complex level one, the PE, and probably even will be beneficial in the um, subsequent steps of complex. So the way I've laid these out is anterior all in red, and then we have the posterior in the blue, and I'll have to admit that probably the anterior a little bit more high yield. So we'll go over the posterior ones and we'll go over the anterior ones, but um, if, if anything, if you know, you're running out of time right now, I'd focus on the anterior more because those are the ones that seem to be asked more frequently. So the way we're going to do this is start with the anterior, then go on to the posterior. As of right now, I have these points on, um, or I have this man have his skin on, and I think that's that's kind of important to know where these points lie over the skin. But we'll actually go through these um, without the skin on it, so you can actually know the you know, the anatomical locations specific to the skeleton. So why don't we take that that skin off of him so we can actually see the underlying structures. And this is more how they'll test it. They'll give you actually specific anatomical landmarks in, um, in regard to the skeleton. So we'll start with anterior. We have the middle ear that is found at the proximal one-third. And that's going to be above the proximal one-third clavicle. Right below it is going to be the nasal sinuses. As you'll see, we have the rest of the sinuses, um, but starting out, we have the just the nasal sinuses, and then the pharynx is below the first rib and at the manubrium junction. And these points are kind of, you can see here, they're not exactly lined up, so I'll try to line them up um, as we go through, but they're more for, you know, the, the superficial, um, the skin finding. So if they don't match up specifically, it kind of will still give you a rough estimate of where they should be found. And especially for, you know, um, people who aren't accustomed to Chapman points yet, it'll kind of give, give you a good idea of um, how we localize as osteopathic physicians. So we talked about the pharynx and then we can go on to the tonsils, which is still in the first intercostal space, um, but adjacent to the manubrium. And then we'll go over to the next set of sinuses, which is at the superior aspect of the second rib, the larynx is found right medial to the sinuses, so uh, closer midline. And then the tongue is at the second rib and sternal junction. So now we have, um, you know, past the manubrium, we're at the sternum. So if I didn't say before that all of these structures that we just went through are bilateral, and most of them are, I'll point out the ones that aren't, um, but it kind of makes sense. You know, it's the structures that are single to to one side, such as the appendix, the spleen, the pancreas. So we'll get to those organs. But um, okay, so next at the second intercostal space is where we find um, the esophagus, bronchus, thyroid, and myocardium. And that's going to be right adjacent to the sternum again. So most references that I've seen have the myocardium bilaterally. For whatever reason, if I had to choose a side, obviously it'd be left because the heart lies on the left side. But we put that as both. Um, going right down the sternum, throughout the whole sternum, is going to be the pylorus. And then the third intercostal space, bilaterally, is going to be the upper lung at the sternal junction. And then the lower lung is at the fourth intercostal space. And these are all bilateral again. Okay, now we're going to move up to the arm. So at the Coracoid process, we have the cerebellum at the greater tuberosity is the retina and conjunctiva, and then the lesser is the neck. So that gives you an idea of kind of like on the surface where these are all lying. So now we're getting to the points that are, um, they're similar ones bilaterally, but they represent different structures. So at the, we said at the fourth intercostal space was the lower lung. And then at the fifth intercostal space, more um, midclavicular line at the junction. All of these points are at the uh, at the junction. So we have the liver, then we have the liver gallbladder, and then we have pancreas. So back up to the fourth, we said was lower lung, and then fifth liver, sixth liver gallbladder, and seventh is pancreas. And this is all on the right side. And then eight, nine, and ten. Be small intestine. So now we can move on to the left side. Left side, fifth 
is stomach acid. Left side sixth is going to be stomach motility. So note the difference there between the acid and motility. And then the seventh is the spleen. So most of these make sense. It's not hard to figure out what would be on what side. It's kind of just the order. Um, and then same thing again, bilaterally is actually the small intestines. Okay, so that was kind of like the upper half. So we have H-E-N-T, we have a little bit of cardiac, we have some head and neck up here, a little bit of cerebellum, um, and then we have kind of upper GI, um, or foregut and midgut. So now at the level of the umbilicus is the bladder, so we're kind of right in the middle or around the bladder, or on the uh, umbilicus is the bladder. And then if we go one inch laterally and then one inch superiorly, so we're at the bladder, one inch laterally, one inch superiorly is going to be the kidney bilaterally. And then if you go one inch laterally, one, in one inch superiorly, then another inch superiorly, so two inches superiorly, is going to be the adrenal gland. That's going to be bilateral. So that's pretty easy to remember just because the adrenal glands are sitting above the kidney. So if you just remember that, one inch, one inch, and then one inch, two inch. Now at the pubic symphysis, obviously this is a male, if you haven't noticed by now, but um, we're going to be pointing out the uh, female equivalents. So at the pubic symphysis is where the ovaries and urethra point will be found. At the inferior ramus is where the uterus is found bilaterally. And then at the lesser trochanter bilaterally is where the rectum is found. Here's where it kind of gets a little, a little bit tricky, but I have a pretty good trick that um, if you can remember, if you can visualize this, um, it'll make it pretty easy to figure out uh, what goes where in terms of the colon. So at the posterior aspect of the IT band is where you'll find the prostate and also the broad ligament equivalent um, in females. So that's bilaterally. We have them on both sides here, the prostate and the broad ligament. And then on the anterior surface of the IT band um, is where we'll find the entire colon. And it's separated on either side. So if we imagined we had the, um, you know, the cecum, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and then the uh, sigmoid colon, and finally the rectum, if we split that right down the middle, so midway through the transverse colon and flapped it downwards, this is what we'd find. The cecum would be the most proximal part, followed by the ascending colon at the um, hepatic flexure, followed by the proximal transverse colon. And then the bottom part is kind of where we cut it and we come back over to this side. So we'll find the, oh, I have these, I have these mixed up, sorry about that. But we have the distal transverse colon, where the descending colon should be. And then we have the descending colon. So these two are just flipped. And then we finally have the sigmoid colon. So these, the, the distal transverse colon and the descending colon should be um, switched. I just, I labeled those incorrectly. So if that makes sense, you can just split the transverse colon right down the center and flap it on either side. So most proximally, you'll have the cecum and the sigmoid, um, and then the ascending and descending colon, and then the proximal pieces um, most distally on the IT band. And then to remind you again, we have the prostate and the broad ligament. Okay, so that is the entire anterior Chapman points. So these ones I think are more important in my opinion. Um, they seem to be tested a little bit more heavily and um, they're probably a little bit more clinically useful. But now we'll go to the posterior aspect where we find all basically all of the same points. There are some that are unique to the back, but um, in terms of if you have an anterior point, you should have a posterior point. Oh, and that reminds me. I don't know really why they classify it as an anterior point because you can't palpate it unless it's a po uh, unless you're on the posterior aspect. But the appendix, and this is a very very high yield important one because it seems to be asked all the time. On the right side, tip of the twelfth rib is where we'll find the appendix, and that's the anterior point. We also have a posterior point if you can see up here that we'll go through. But twelfth rib, tip of it is the. Uh, is where the appendix will be. So we have a lot of stuff going on up here. 
and um, they don't seem to be tested as much. But um, if you can, you know, kind of just have a, a slight idea of where these fall, um, you know, it could give you a point or two. So we have the retina and conjunctiva, and that's actually on the occiput itself. The middle ear is on the lateral aspect of um, the first cervical vertebrae. So I guess at the um, the first palpable transverse process, and remember all the, all the rest are called the articular pillars. So the first transverse process of C1 is where the middle ear will be found. And then a little bit medial to that, so all of these again are bilateral. Um, a little bit medial to that is going to be the cerebellum. And then if we go down to C2, more laterally on the articular pillars is the nasal sinuses. And then a little bit more medially is going to be um, a lot of structures, the pharynx, the tongue, the larynx, the sinuses, and the arm. So it's, it's kind of a non-specific point. You'll have to, you know, you can't straight up diagnose this person based on the Chapman point. So remember, all of those structures are on C2. And then we come down to C3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And sometimes it, it, it varies what these are. I've seen that it's, um, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, or not 8, but T1, sorry about that. Um, all of these are uh, correspond to the neck, and that makes sense because, you know, they're, they're the cervical vertebrae. And then we have the cerebrum, which is um, going to be three, four, five, six articular pillars. And it's, the cerebrum's a little bit more lateral than the neck. So, I mean, these are both bilateral structures, but cerebrum is found more laterally on the articular pillars, while the, um, the neck is kind of closer to the spinous process. We have the neck, which extends all the way down to T1, and then we have all of our points again on the thoracic vertebrae. Okay, so we'll start with the medial aspect, the superior medial aspect of the scapula. We have this long point, and that's where the arms and also the pectoralis minor is found, and um, at the spine and medial aspect of the scapula is where the neurasthena and pec minor again is. We come down to the second thoracic vertebrae, um, just adjacent to the spinous process, and that's where we'll find the esophagus, bronchus, and thyroid. So all those are right next to the spinous process. And remember that at the level of the spine is where we have um, thoracic vertebrae 3, the inferior angle is 7, and iliac crests are where the, it's where the fourth lumbar vertebrae is. So keep those points in mind. So we talked about the esophagus, bronchus, thyroid being on the second thoracic. Now if we move down to the superior aspect of the third is where we find the lung, the upper lung in the myocardium, once again bilaterally. And if we move down to the inferior aspect of the third thoracic vertebrae is where we find the lower lung. Okay, so it's, it kind of follows the same uh, sequence as the anterior points. It's just a little bit different. Um, there are more specific points to where these are found. Sometimes they say between the transverse process and spinous process of, you know, um, T2 and T3. But, you know, I'm kind of just giving a general overview here. And it's hard to line it up exactly. I'm, giving, I'm using this more to, you know, help physicians find exact points. Um, on the skin who aren't, you know, as comfortable with OMM. Okay, so we talked about the upper lung and the lower lung. Those are both bilaterally on three and four. Then we have on the left, stomach acidity. And then on the right is going to be the liver. And those are going to be both at uh, T5. Remember to look once again at the rule of threes. It states that, um, you know, the transverse process and spinous process um, aren't always at the same level according to, uh, as you move down the um, thoracic spine. So be sure to be aware of that. The stomach peristalsis, and then liver gallbladder. So left is stomach peristalsis, and the liver gallbladder is going to be at thoracic vertebrae 6. And then at thoracic vertebrae 7 is going to be spleen, and then pancreas on the left and right. So those still kind of follow the same sequence. It's just um, they're either at the 
right next to the spinous process or they're a little bit more laterally to the um, transverse process. So now coming down to the small intestines at 8, 9, and 10 again, right next to the spinous process is where the small intestine is. The pylorus is found on the right T9, right next to the transverse process of T9, um, maybe a little bit below it. And then right below that at T10 is the ovaries bilaterally. And then if we go over to rib 10 is where we'll find the in intestines peristalsis. So we actually didn't have an anterior Chapman point for that one, but we do posteriorly. And then the same kind of setup as the um, anterior point, the adrenals are found at T11, and appendix is right at that junction of T11, um, T12 at the body, and then kidney is found at L1. We actually don't have any Chapman points on T12. And then to finish it off at the inferior aspect, we have the abdomen and bladder at the transverse process of L2, and the urethra is at the transverse process of L3. And then something interesting is that at the transverse process of L2, 3, and 4, and if you draw a line to the iliac crest and you make a little triangle, this is where you'll find um, kind of a big Chapman point for the large intestine. And that's also all of these points are bilaterally again. For a female, the uterus is found at the transverse process of L5. And then we have a lot of structures, kind of at the uh, sacral sulci, is where the vagina, prostate, uterus, and broad ligament are all found. And then, closer to the ILA of the sacrum, but not quite there, is where the rectum and groin glands are. And then we have two posterior points for the uh, sciatic. We have one sciatic anterior and one sciatic posterior. The sciatic posterior found at the PSIS and then at the kind of at the acetabulo and the um, where the acetabulum meets actually the hip joint. So that's where the sciatic posterior two points are. And the fallopian tube or seminal vesicles actually shares that superior sciatic posterior point. Um, as well as a uh, point that is inferior at the inferior ramus of the hip. Then we have a point that is kind of right at the gluteal fold, midline um, at the inner side of the posterior leg. That's where the clitoris and uh, vagina is found. And finally, the sciatic anterior aspect, I crossed out, I accidentally wrote posterior first, but that should be sciatic anterior, as, uh, anterior point has four separate points and they are all on the femur. We have one superiorly on the lateral aspect of the femur and then we have two more where the distal end and then one more finally near the posterior aspect of the condyles. So hopefully that helped. I know it was long and once again, I'd focus on the front Chapman points. The anterior ones seem to be a little bit more important. Um, and if you have a rough idea kind of on the skin, how they look, that also isn't bad. But most likely they'll be, um, they'll be asking the questions in, in regard to the anatomy we went through. So hope that helped. All of the points in this video were from this figure and the following figure, which is the anterior and posterior Chapman points um, from the book Di Giovanni.